Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So today's video is a sew along and I've not done one of these for a while, but back in March when it was the lovely Sew Frugal 22 challenge, one of the patterns that I wanted to make was this one, which is the Etty top by Tammy Handmade and I didn't get around to it in March because I was ill and it was just super busy. It was just one of those months. But I decided that I wanted to have a go at making this up in April, which is where we are now. And uh, I thought you'd be interested to watch how I put this together because I do really like it. I think it's a fabulous pattern. I love how it's turned out. But what I would say is that I do think the way that she gets you to finish the top is not great, I'll be honest. I think it seems like it was just a bit of a rush and I'm not really sure why she has you do the finishing that she suggests when there is a much neater way of doing it. So I do tend to veer off a little bit from the instructions somewhat to you know give you a much nicer finish on the inside and I thought you would be interested to see how I do it so yeah I made this up in a lovely viscose as you can see this is a navy viscose I'm filming the intro for this at night time it's dark outside so I'm really sorry that the lighting's not great and I'm not in the most glamorous background that I possibly could be I'm also filming on my phone because my memory card has just broken so I can't film on my camera till I get a new one so everything else is just going wrong totally wrong but it, this is life this is real so anyway the other thing I just wanted to quickly mention was some of the footage for this sew along is a little bit rough and ready and there's a lot of footage where my shoulder is getting in the way so please don't see this as a professional put out tutorial it's just designed to be a sew along that I've done that I thought you would like to see as I say I know my shoulder is in the way of some of the sewing for a lot of it but hopefully the voiceover that you will hear will just make you laugh in places and you know this is real this is real life we're not real presenters you know we don't get any professional training for this we're just out there doing our own thing and I thought you'd like to see it anyway so Please don't, you know, criticise me on that. I would be really grateful, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. And I hope you enjoy looking at the photos at the end of the finished garment. And I will see you at the end of the sew along. So we're going to be sewing up the Etty camisole, which is a free pattern by the lovely Tammy Handmade. I will leave a link to it down in the description box below so you can go and get your copy. It only comes in a PDF. It's a great introduction to Tammy's patterns. She's got a number of absolutely gorgeous modern patterns. I've bought a few of them actually and I haven't tried any of the others yet so I'm trying this one first and I thought it would be really nice for you to see how I put this together. I've not made this before. Um, a couple of my lovely friends have made this already and I think a few of them have said it comes up quite big so yeah we'll we'll see how we get on anyway the beauty of this pattern is it's got this beautiful sort of scalloped edge as you can see on the pattern piece that I've cut out here and it's it's just really 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 pretty it's designed to be quite loose fit there are no bust darts at all in this pattern and it's only five pattern pieces you've got the front camisole which is cut on the fold the front facing which is just there we've also got the back facing and the back pattern piece and then finally we have the strap piece here as well so when it comes to sizing this pattern goes from a size 6 to a 24 which equates to a bust of 31 inch up to a 49 inch there is one and a half inches of ease across the bust and there's 11 inches of ease around the waist so i have gone with a size 14 which is a body measurement of 39 inches and a finished garment measurement of 40.5 inches. My full bust is around the sort of 38 mark at the minute, but I want this to be quite loose because I'm going to be wearing this when I go to Portugal next month and it's going to be hot and I don't want anything too tight and sticky. Fabric requirements depend on the size you are making, obviously. 
and in the pattern layout of the instructions it does tell you it says mentions 50 inch wide fabric i have never seen 50 inch wide fabric i'll be honest i've generally seen 44 inch and then the 58 inch wide so yeah I, it's not something i've seen I, I can't answer for that but it recommends anywhere between sort of a meter and a meter and, and a half ish dependent on the size and the width of the fabric that you are making i have only needed a meter of fabric which is great because it means those little scraps that you have languishing in your stash and don't know what to do with this is probably going to be a great pattern for that the fabric recommendations are something lightweight woven such as cotton viscose rayon satin and crepe the top that tammy has made for the pattern inspiration on the picture of the pattern is a viscose twill black, black vis viscose twill so it still has a bit of weight to it but that lovely drape that is going to work really well for this pattern i have used this which is just a plain navy viscose that is in my stash i can't remember where i got this from but it, you know it's somewhere like minerva or somewhere but you can pick this stuff up really cheaply it's not as weighty as a viscose twill but i think it will still work perfectly well for this pattern so yeah i am really looking forward to making this up if you've watched my stitched up in london vlog that i put out I will link a card to it up here somewhere. Then I mentioned that I bought some beautiful tan alone from Liberty while I was in London. And I really want to make this top out of that. But obviously I want to twirl it first because as we all know, Liberty tan alone is quite expensive. And I think I need to just make sure that this fits the way I want it to fit before I cut into that precious fabric. So now the lovely Ruan has made this top and I know that she made it in a bigger size than she probably really needed and I did ask Ruan if she made any adjustments to this pattern for her because she's five foot nine and five foot ten and usually I do have to lengthen most of my patterns for them to fit me but Ruan told me that she didn't lengthen hers at all and it fits fine so I've just decided to go with the pattern as is and I've cut out the straight size 14 with no adjustments whatsoever and we're going to sew it up together and see how we get on. So, if you've got everything ready and you want to sew along with me, then get your pattern printed out, stuck together, find your size, cut your fabric, and let's get sewing. So the first thing that we're gonna be working on are the shoulder straps. So take your two shoulder straps, press them right sides together, and then we are gonna stitch using a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch, which is what you can see me doing here. So I'm going to stitch all the way along the raw edges together. And then when we've done this, the next step we're gonna to need to do is to trim the seams down by about half. And I like to do this with pinking shears because especially in something like viscose, if you just use normal straight scissors when it comes to turning them out the right way, they can fray a lot and fray through the stitching line that you've just done and end up in a big pickle. So I tend to like to trim them down using pinking shears and then I find that it stops them fraying when I'm turning them the right way out. So now I am going to be using my pinking shears as you can see here to trim down the seam allowance by half because this is just going to make it easier to turn them the right way around. There's various ways that you can create rouleau loops and turn them the right way around. I tend to use a loop turner. I do have some of those prim turners which I haven't been able to get the hang of as yet to be honest but I've not used them that much. And you can also do it with an overlocker you can create a longer tail from your overlocker and then put a safety pin in that and use that to turn the right way around I believe that's a good way as well but I haven't tried that I don't know if it works but for me I tend to just use a normal loop turner and again there is a bit of a knack to it but once you get the hang of it and you've done it a few times it is fairly straightforward so here's my loop turner. This is what it looks like if you've not seen one before. It's got a little hook on one end and here I am inserting it into the strap all the way through to the other end and then you hook it over and in theory slide it 
over so it then pulls through. Now, like all these things, when you start filming, it never goes right. And I generally don't put the hook through the fabric because obviously it leaves a hole. I generally will just turn it through, but as you can see, it's come unhooked. So let's just put that to one side while we start on the other one and I'll come back to that one in a minute. But yeah, essentially you slip it all the way through, hook it over and then fold it back on itself. It can be really fiddly and yeah, the first few times I tried to do this, it was not easy, shall I say, but it's one of those things that the more you practice at it, the easier it becomes and you do find the knack of it. I will say that you can only generally do this with a lightweight fabric. If you use anything heavier than a, a sort of cotton poplin, I would say, it's just not going to turn through, especially at this width of a rouleau. You really need to be using sort of cotton poplin or lighter. Certainly you'd never be able to do it with denim or, you know, heavy canvas, that kind of thing. But if I wasn't doing this on camera, it would have worked perfectly first time. And uh, yeah, it uh, really hasn't. So the beauty of editing means that you can cut out all the swear words and the time it takes to actually turn one of these things through. And, you know, it makes it look really simple and straightforward, doesn't it? So I'm going to go and press these now and then here we go we've got the two completed ruler loops ready to crack on with the rest of the camisole so what we're going to do now is we're going to start working on the front of the bodice so you take your front bodice piece right sides facing you and then the front facing piece and we are going to join these right sides together it's quite an unusual construction, this camisole, because normally if you've made the Ogden cami, for instance, you would uh, attach the facing pieces at the side seams and then the bodice seams at the side seams and then put them together. And this particular pattern has you construct the bodice front and the bodice back completely separately. I don't know what I'm actually doing at this point, so I think I'm probably just reading the instructions. But anyway, here we go. So I'm going to pin the facing to the front bodice, right sides together, all around the armholes and the front scallops. The instructions do tell you that you can mark in the seam line using chalk, or you could use a friction pen, for instance, around the scallops because you want your stitching here to be really accurate so that it gives you that lovely finish and that lovely scalloped edge. But I'm sort of just, you know, a bit of a maverick when it comes to these kind of things and I'm gonna just wing it, shall we say. So before we actually stitch all around the scallops and the front armholes, we need to insert the straps and these go obviously between the facing and the front bodice and we're literally just going to line it up the raw edges of the facing the bodice and the raw edge of the strap to each other and just pin those in place. And here I am inserting the other strap. I think I've got one in place now and I'm just doing the other side. So again, insert the strap between the facing and the bodice and line all the raw edges up and just pin in place as you can see when I eventually get this straight. You need to make sure that you get your straps fairly straight so when it's sewn they sit nicely against your body and I think I'm more or less happy with that. I'm sorry that you're seeing more of my shoulder and my elbow here than much else but um, I think you get the idea. So now we're going to sew and we're just going to sew from one side of the armhole all the way around the scallops and the center all the way around to the other side again you can't see much here because my shoulder is in the way unfortunately but we're going to sew all the way around and we're sewing at a half inch seam allowance that's the seam allowance on this pattern and you can see that I'm wearing a lovely grey hoodie here this isn't a me made hoodie at all it's a very inexpensive hoodie that I bought from Primark when I was with my daughter in Leicester. Um, you know, I could have made one of these obviously, but 
I didn't because, well, I was in Primark with my daughter and spotted it and thought that would be great to just throw on when I'm lounging around at home and, yeah, I'm just waffling now and thinking of ridiculous things to talk about while you can't see what I'm sewing. But you sort of get the idea. I tend to sew with my needle down when I'm doing this kind of work because you do need to be quite precise. And I think having the needle down helps you pivot fairly well to enable you just to have a little bit more control over where the needle is going. So you just work your way around all the scallops. Again, if you have put a line in to show you where you need to stitch with chalk, it's probably going to be a bit easier. But as I mentioned earlier, I like to just, you know, go with the flow, shall we say, and see how, how things end up. As I say, this is a wearable twirl, so to speak. So it's not really that important if the end result isn't amazing. Uh, it's more about the fit than anything else. But obviously, if I get a wearable garment out of it at the end of the day, that's going to be uh, an added bonus before I make any changes to the fit, etc., and decide to make this in the Liberty. So I think here I'm just checking the instructions again as to see what we're going to be doing next. And what we're going to be doing now, now the facing is, oh look, I'm bringing you a little bit closer so that you can actually maybe see what is going on rather than looking at my shoulders. So I think I've been fiddling about with the lighting as well because obviously I'm using a dark coloured fabric which is not easy for you to see with a sew along. Um, right, now we're going to be snipping into the seam all the way up to the stitching line but not through the stitching line and I'm snipping at the, as you can see there, look, the edges of the scallops and at the centre point where it comes into a V. And that's going to allow us to be able to turn it the right way through and then press it in place. And I'm just snipping around the armhole here as well, as you can hopefully see. And we'll do the same on the other side. The instructions don't tell you to understitch the front. And usually that's something that I would do. And I did think about it for this, but decided against it. Because I think to get a really neat finish and to make this look really, really nice on the scallops, understitching could probably make that distort a little bit so I decided to just go with the pan and see how this pressed so now I'm just turning it through turning those straps through as you can see and I'm going to use my little pointy thing that comes with my faff machine to just try and ease those corners through nice shot there of my shoulder again oh dear I really need to improve my sew alongs don't I so that you can actually see what's going on but anyway um yes using any kind of pointy thing a, a little pointy thing I guess will help you to uh, help you to <laughs> point out all those lovely scallops then you can take it to your ironing board and give it a bit of a press so I'm back from the ironing board and look at that we have a beautifully scalloped front bodice piece and I'm actually quite impressed with how it's all sitting actually without being understitched. Um, I don't know how this would work in other types of fabrics but certainly in this lovely viscose it's the facing is sitting really well inside and it's not attempting to flip through certainly at the moment. So what we're doing now is we're working on the back bodice piece. So I've got the back bodice piece and the back facing right sides together pinned at the top and what we need to do here is we need to stitch again at half an inch seam allowance and I'm trying to actually bring you in a little bit closer so you can actually see what I'm doing instead of just looking at my shoulder but we're going to stitch across at one no half an inch seam allowance and there's a couple of notches in the back where the straps will fit so you need to make sure that you've actually cut those and we're going to stitch up to the notches and then stitch beyond the notches so we leave a gap where the notches are so that we can then insert the straps through once this bit's complete. So that's what you can see me doing here. Hopefully you can see a little bit more stitching rather than shoulder which would be really useful because I'm sure you didn't join this vlog to 
have a look at my right shoulder and see what my right shoulder is doing all the time because that's not very interesting. Okay, so we've got the back bodice stitched and I've just come back from the ironing board again. So I have basically turned out the back bodice so the facing is to the inside now and I've just pressed it across that seam at the top. And what we need to do now is bring our front bodice back and we lay that so it is right sides up and I'm just making sure those straps are out of the way and then we're going to take our back bodice piece wherever I've put it. Oh here we go and we're going to lay that right sides to right side down. It's always quite interesting working with viscose because it's very drapey and tends to want to do its own thing. Move around a lot and be quite shifty. So if you are inexperienced at sewing I would suggest using something a little bit more easy to handle like a cotton lawn but anyway here we go I have my first strap and here I am attempting to insert it into the gap that we left in the last step where we stitched across the back bodice and back facing and you can see me fiddling about with this but I decided that I was just going to reach for some tweezers here here we go look and push this through that little hole with my tweezers um, fandangle it any way you can making sure that you don't get the strap twisted at this point that's really important obviously because you don't want to go to all this effort to make a beautiful top and find that your straps are twisted because that would be super annoying but I'm just fiddling about with this and then I'm just turning it out so that I can see where that strap is and I'm just going to pin that in place for the time being there I go look making sure that that oh no I've not even got that far look I've got the tweezers through now because I gave up trying to fandangle that through pulling the tweezers through where the gap is to grab hold of the strap and pull it through and then I can just pin that in place there we go look and I'm going to do exactly the same you will find in a second with the other strap so we'll move across to the gap in the other side of the back bodice and I'm just working from the inside here. Put those tweezers through that little gap when I can find it and I will grab the other raw edge of the shoulder strap. Here I am looking for the gap and hoping that I did actually leave a gap which fortunately I did. So making sure that the strap is completely straight and I'm going to grab hold of that raw edge with my tweezers and just pull it through that gap. I think this gap actually I probably left a little bit too small but we, we, we've got there in the end fortunately. And there we go look two straps are now pinned in place. So the next step you need to do is just close those gaps in the back bodice and then the next bit that I am doing which I'm veering from the instructions is I did decide to understitch the back bodice which is what I'm doing here. So working from the right side with the facing towards the right as you can see and the straps towards the left I am just understitching at about a quarter of an inch all along the back bodice and I think that will help make sure that that back facing lies inside the garment when I'm wearing it and probably not flip out. I think that's quite an important step really. So once we've done that I'm then going to take it back to the sewing machine and as you can see here now we've got a back bodice and a front bodice attached to each other just by straps. So we're getting there guys. We are getting there with our little Etty camisole. Right so we've now got the front and back bodice complete with the facings intact, oh, everything is pressed and lovely, the straps are in place and we now need to join the side seams. Now I am going to veer away totally from the instructions for this pattern because I'm going to throw it out on a limb here. I think the finishing 
of this pattern is pretty messy if I'm honest and I think there's a much nicer way of doing it. So we haven't finished the edges of the facing yet as you can see here and it, the pattern actually tells you to do this at this point and then just sew up the side seams and then you're done. But I think that's just not going to look very nice, especially on this kind of fabric that's really fluid and really drapey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to French seam it all in one. And what we're going to do first is we are going to open out the one of the side seams with the facing and the main bodice piece. And this is the back piece. And then we're going to do exactly the same, making sure that we don't get these straps twisted, like I clearly have here. Like so. So we've got the back bodice piece here fully opened out. And then the front bodice piece is here fully opened out. And what we're going to do is we're just going to flip one over the other, like so. And I've just taken it back over to my sewing machine now just to show you what we're going to be doing. But essentially we are going to be pinning at the underarm seam of both the front and back facing at one of the side seams. And then we're going to pin all the way along the edge of the facing and then all the way down to the hem. And we are doing this wrong sides together to start with. So here you can see me pinning all the way down that side seam from the facing all the way down to the hem and we're doing it wrong sides together because we are going to French seam the entire side seams. So if you didn't want to French seam, if you just wanted to overlock it or do it with a zigzag stitch, you can do and it would just be exactly the same process but instead of doing it wrong sides together as I'm doing here, you would just do it right sides together. So you just open out the entire side seam of the bodice including the facing and join the two together. So I've pinned together and then I'm just going to do exactly the same on the other side seam. So that's what we're doing here. So again I'm just pinning all the way down the second side seam, starting off matching the underarm seams and then all the way down from the facing right to the hem, just like we did the other side. And then we're going to stitch at a quarter of an inch because remembering our seam allowance in total is half an inch. So we need to do a quarter of an inch on the side seam as it is. And then we will trim that down to half its width and turn it the other way around, press and sew again at another quarter of an inch. And that will give us our French seam. But you'll see that as we as we go along. So now they are nicely pinned. I'm taking it to the machine. I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down one side seam and I'm going to repeat that process for the other side seam. So sometimes, as I'm finding here, viscose can get stuck in your machine if you don't uh, have it lined up correctly. But you know, it's part and parcel of dressmaking, isn't it, that we uh, encounter these issues and I'm now just having to wind a bobbin because I have lost at bobbin roulette on this occasion. So the beauty of editing means that we've been able to cut that little bit of footage out for you so I'm sure you're not interested in seeing how I wind a bobbin but um, here we go we're carrying on now stitching the entire side seam at a quarter of an inch and this bit uh, doesn't take too long actually, it's uh, fairly straightforward sewing this isn't it? And then what we're going to do is we are going to trim that seam down by half, so it will be an eighth of an inch. So that's one side seam done. And then we're going to quickly just repeat that for the other side seam. So one more side seam to go and then we'll be able to get these French seams 
done. You can see that I'm running out of witty things to talk to you about now while you watch my right shoulder doing its shouldery type things. Yeah, I'm not very good at small talk, never have been. Not like my husband, he's uh, he's always been the more sociable person than me who could just find anything to talk about with strangers whereas I tend to be the person stood in the corner with a, a glass of something fizzy trying to look intelligent and worth talking to I guess and not really think of anything interesting to say. Right, so moving on. So once you have trimmed down your side seams you need to turn out your camisole and press those side seams which I'm just showing you here and then we've then at this point now we are going to stitch again at quarter of an inch cracking shot of the shoulder there and this will enclose those raw edges totally so that you'll have this beautiful French seam all the way on each of the side seams that will lie inside of your garment and it gives you a really lovely finish I love this finish on viscose especially and lightweight fabrics like cotton lawn and silks and things not that I sew with silk very often I don't tend to have that many places to go where silk is the most appropriate fabric to wear to be honest these days but hey ho such is life so you can see me just fandangling with these side seams a little bit here you can pin them but you know I like to live dangerously and it is only a wearable twile but um, if you need to pin them, pin them. It's it's no big deal. And, you know, I will try and have shortcuts wherever I can possibly have shortcuts. But there are some things that I won't shortcut. But um, pinning when I've pressed viscose into a French seam is probably one of those things that I feel that I can shortcut. And I'm so sorry that you can't see what I'm doing here. I will work on my photography skills for the next sew along. So once you have both of your side seams completely done you can see those lovely French seams there look you can turn your camisole the right way out and there we have it it's more or less complete. So when you've sewed up the side seams you should have an almost completed camisole. Now if I show you this from the inside out I can show you the finish which is much neater than the instructions tell you to do. So I, we have just created the beautiful French seam, as you can see here, and it's all enclosed within the facing at the side seam just there. That's all neat because the French seam is on the inside. So what we're going to do now is we're going to finish the facing all in one go. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to run a line of stitches, probably about a quarter of an inch all the way around the bottom of the raw edge here, and then use that as a sort of stabiliser to fold over and I'm going to fold it over twice and then edge stitch it all the way around. So we'll take that to the sewing machine and we'll do that now. So here we are back at my lovely Faf Creative 4.5 and I am starting off just by running a line of stitching quarter inch from the raw edge of the facing and we're going to do the bottom of the hem of the camisole in exactly the same way. But as the facing is now completed, we can do this all in one rather than just sewing up the side seams and then sticking them together. So I'm just going around a quarter of an inch all the way around the bottom hem of the facing. And then what I will do is I will take this back to the ironing board. I will press over using my stitching line as my guide by a quarter of an inch and then fold it over again. And then you'll see that we'll be coming back to the sewing machine to edge stitch that all the way round. So towards the end of this sew along I finally seem to be finding my groove a little bit and I am, oh here we, hello, bit of a headache there. Yeah I am just changing my foot to my edge stitching foot so we can stitch the hem of the facing to make it secure and nice and neat. So I'm just moving my needle over and 
I always tend to edge stitch to be honest because I just think it gives such a neat finish. I'm just altering the lighting look on my camera. Look at that. You can actually see a bit better now. Why didn't I think of doing that at the beginning of this thing? Oh dear me. Anyway, here we go. So I am sewing this round, edge stitching all the way around to finish off the facing so that it looks really neat. You could also use bias binding if you wanted to or you could just overlock this you know any any way of finishing this is is acceptable it's whatever you want to do I guess but for me I like to well sometimes I'll use bias binding I'm not going to use bias binding on this purely because I think it will add bulk to quite a flimsy camisole to be honest but also you know as I've mentioned a couple of times during this this is just a wearable toile and I'm not going to the effort of putting bias binding on it but I am just stitching this all the way around now, as you can see, and then I'll do exactly the same process for the bottom hem of the camisole, and then we should be about finished. So I've done the facing, and now I'm going to work on the bottom hem. And as you can see, my bottom hem doesn't quite line up, but don't worry about that, because I can just trim that off after this next little bit. But here I am just repeating the process for the bottom hem that we've just done with the facing. I am sewing at quarter of an inch a line parallel to the raw edge of the bottom of the garment that I'm going to use as a pressing guide to press up. And we'll press it up twice to enclose that raw edge and then edge stitch again, exactly as we've just done with the facing. And then the exciting bit is trying this on to see if it fits which is always a bit nerve-wracking because I haven't tried this on at all yet and you know having gone to all this effort I want to uh, make sure it fits before I put this sew along out. So I have pressed up my hem and here I am now totally forgetting about altering the lighting on my camera but we're nearly there guys we're nearly there so I'm now just edge stitching the hem all the way around exactly as we did with the facing and then it will be time to try it on take some gorgeous pictures in the garden while the sun is shining to show you how it looks and I've actually been thinking while I've been making this that it would be nice to lengthen this into a dress to wear with a belt I think that would be really cute and that's something that I might consider doing dependent on how this fits when it's finished but you know that's the beauty of sewing isn't it that you can always come up with other ideas of how you can make something your own and hack it to your own taste and your own desires something you you can't always do with ready to wear it, it, it sort of comes as it, is, as it is really doesn't it and you have to just make do so i'm just trimming my threads and then i'm going to go give this one final press and then we'll try on and I'll show you how it looks. the finished product and I hope you really enjoyed looking at how I put this together and how I adapted it to create a much nicer finish that I think anyway and I do really really love this top I'm pleased with the size that I chose as I say I chose a size 14 and as you can see I've got plenty of room in it still and I love the length on me as it is as well I think I chose the perfect length I think that I could easily lengthen this into a dress and I might actually attempt that because I think that would be really nice just to wear for summer. I think that would be super nice. I'm actually thinking that I did made the right decision by following the instructions with respect to not understitching the front neckline. I don't think it needs it. It has bagged out a little bit on this side and I'm just wondering whether it would have been better if I had stay stitched it first. And I think when I make my next version, especially out of the gorgeous Liberty fabric that I got in London, 
I will stay, stay stitch it before I um, start stitching the neckline facing to the front bodice piece because I think that will just probably hold it in place a little bit because as you can see it's just a little bit blues on east still but otherwise I do like it I think it's a really lovely top you know for a free pattern and I can't wait to have a go at some of our other patterns so if you've got any questions as always please leave it in the comments below please don't comment on the shoulder situation I know my shoulder is just cutting out a lot of the sewing but hopefully the voiceover explains what I'm doing and you get the idea so anyway I'm gonna leave it there guys but I hope you've enjoyed and I will be back with you really soon take care bye <laughs>